Excuse me, could you point me in the direction of Scream City? <coughs> Never mind, I think I found it. Hello, horror freaks. Welcome back to Scream City. I'm your host, Monica. And I'm Jessica. And today we're discussing another classic, The Fly. Yeah. I would like to mention before we get started that I think in the last episode, I mentioned that this was a John Carpenter film. Um, I was obviously mistaken. I am obviously a fake horror fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually thinking of The Thing. Mm-hmm. And I know that was one of our options. Right. And But we ended up doing The Fly. Yes. So... I just needed to kind of get that out there because I didn't want anyone to hate me. Right. For Um, sure. At least for this. (laughs) Uh At least for not knowing my, you know, my directors. So, (laughs) Um, but anyway, before we get into the movie, uh, what has been your peak and pit uh, for these past few days? Pit? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really have a pit. Honestly, me either. Life's been kind of great. I might be a little manic. Yeah. But that's besides the point. Besides the point. Mm-hmm. Um, peak, I have two. Oh. Number one, um, I'm going on a <clears throat> on a work outing. It's, mm-hmm. it's like a, you know, a little, uh, um, this Friday. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going with my BFF Alexia. Yep. Um, it's kind of, it, it was originally supposed to be like a hike, but we're just going to like some state park and that's doing cute. stuff. So you have to ground yourself with nature once in a while. Right. Like once in a blue moon. 100%. Doesn't have to be all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. My second uh, peak is I'm going to Chicago. <laughs> is that Chicago. not what you were talking about? Yes. For this Friday. Wait, you leave tomorrow, don't you? No, I leave Sunday. Oh. I leave Sunday. Girl, I thought you leave tomorrow. Girl, no. Oh. No, 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 no. Wait, did I say? I probably said tomorrow. You, well, you told me that last week, I oh, think. Because then, I, whatever. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But that's no, cool. My, my work outing is on Friday. Okay. And I leave on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. That's exciting. Chicago. 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 It's a city that's exciting. It's, it's a city, city that's, that's inviting. inviting. It's a city that's inviting. It's a city that's inviting. Anyway um yeah, hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah dude uh yeah honestly i don't have a peak i mean i don't have <laughs> i don't have a pit either at least not one that i can really think of and that really put me in like a shitty mood right. um my peak hmm, i think it's it's just kind of um more days to the convention or yeah. more like less days yeah right it's just, just kind of counting down it's like that feeling of of it being summer and knowing yeah. that, you know, you're you're going to start wearing, like... I was going to say, I feel like this is kind of the first sign that we get. Like, the, this is the the entrance to summer. Because once this is over, we enter the actual summer months. Yes. Um, so, so it's kind excited. of exciting. So it's like saying goodbye to spring on a very good note. On a very good <laughs> note. Um, yes. But yeah, so I'm excited. I just need to... I, I need to plan my outfits because I, yeah. I don't have any yet. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's do that. I'm excited to meet okay. some people. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and and to meet y'all because I know that there's gonna because be we're going to see some of you guys. There's going to be a few horror freaks at this convention, and that, I'm so excited. Uh, besides the point. Besides besides that, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Okay. On. <laughs> As we stall away from that. Right. Right. Anyway, um, finally getting into the movie. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to watch this movie. I don't blame you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, no. Um, just know that, of course, there will be spoilers, as always. So don't say we didn't warn you. But just to give a quick synopsis, and this is coming straight from Miss Google. Mm-hmm, we love her. Um, when scientist Seth Brundle completes his teleportation device, he decides to, t- to test its abilities on himself. So... <laughs> the description in the synopsis was a lot longer on Google. I said absolutely not. Right. We are shortening <laughs> with two sentences. Understood. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, getting straight into the juicy parts of this episode. Okay. What are your three for this movie? Your favorite scene? Your favorite? Your first impression? And your first? Not your first. Your favorite Brundle phase? Since we only get one kill in this movie, right? It's honestly a really sad one. Um, at least to me. Um, so, so we'll go with Brundle phase because I feel like throughout the movie, you know, we like, see him morph. Yeah. And it's fucking disgusting. 100%. <laughs> okay. So um, first impression. So fun fact, I actually watched this movie for the first time a few days ago with my sister. And let me tell you, 
it was definitely a movie. Mm, yes, ma'am. It was definitely a movie. It was a movie. It was super unsettling and gross, but like in a true horror oh, way. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I can only imagine what people in the 80s were thinking of this. I, and I can see why it, people are like... I terrified. Can see, not just that, but I can see why people um, appreciate and like adore this film. Yeah. As a horror fan. Mm-hmm. Same. Um... And also, again, I kind of went into it very blind. Call me a fake horror fan. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, I didn't know Jeff Goldblum was in this movie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm telling you, whatever. <laughs> and so when I read his name in the title credit or whatever. Um, You're like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm Jay. And then I saw him. I was like, oh, he's so dreamy. Mm-hmm. And he's so cute. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a movie. I watched it with my sister, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Your favorite scene? Uh, my favorite scene, I think I have two, but I'm going to save one of them for the most unsettling mm-hmm. scene um, in a second. So I think I'm going to have to go when <laughs> with when his literal ear <laughs> falls off. It just like... I was like, hello. <laughs> um, it was so gross, but so funny at the same time. Like, my sister and I both literally said, what the fuck? fuck at the same time and it was it was a moment um let me tell you something and i'm sure we're gonna get into this a little bit later but the special effects in this oh it's amazing like like the makeup Mm -hmm. everything is just absolutely wonderful i yeah i shout out to to the makeup artists who worked on this may be one of the very first films that i am able to truly appreciate it you know what i mean i mean obviously i appreciate it in every single movie that you know uses it but this one like went above and beyond 100 percent, absolutely i think incredible. um i think that the more that we progress with um kind of like cinema and film mm-hmm. in today it's a lot of cgi which is apparently a lot more expensive mm. because it's all computer animations right. and things like that um but i think one like i think one as someone who is in the audience I think can really appreciate like FX makeup for sure because it looks more authentic and mm-hmm. real and um, it just gives you a better feel of like ew. Yeah, it's more <laughs> realistic. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And then my favorite Brundle fly phase, um, <laughs> and I think this is probably like the most unsettling scene, uh, is when Seth was the Brundle fly, um, and it was when ronnie walked in on him and he was just crawling up the wall <laughs> like that was so ugly yeah it was so scary it was the giving reagan turning his head around was so creepy <laughs> yeah um fun fact i actually literally closed my eyes because i just because it's of how disgusting how like unsettling like <laughs> I, I feel like that's the only word that the I only really word like disturbing unsettling it's, it's it's so like ugh, yeah it's so disturbing it's disgusting um I love it. So, yeah, I think that was probably one of my favorite, uh, like, un- most unsettling scene and my favorite, like, Brundle fly phase. Um, just because, yeah, I don't, <laughs> ew, I can still see it. Just, he's just literally crawling up the wall. And he just turns around. Ugh, he's so like, cool. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll kind of transition that into my favorite phase, which is honestly basically the same thing um so it's when he's discovering his abilities the first few days and so he's doing all of these exercises and then he's climbing on the wall but then the very like next day he's like doing these acrobatic type moves and i was like come on first of all i can tell that that was a stunt double which was like the most funniest thing to me but i just thought it was really funny whenever he goes into the bar and then he like arm wrestles that guy and he like Mm -hmm. breaks his wrist in half damn yeah uh-huh. mm-hmm. i like that only because you can kind of see my so my thing my question was like why is he so strong if he's supposed to be a fly flies are they're Very quick weak. but like i can easily squash them right <laughs> like i understand he's supposed to be half human but i wouldn't give him the ability to be that strong right you know what i mean yeah. so i think that was just kind of the thing that I enjoyed the most only because all of the other phases literally made my skin crawl. Yes. And I wanted to puke at the thought of, well, at just looking at how bumpy and disgusting mm-hmm. he was. And it really, it really disturbed me. So. And the scene where, where he takes off his fingernail and he just yes. like squirts it into yes. the mirror. I'm like, 
Yes. I disgusting. Gagged. It, I was like, it was gross. Uh, yeah, <laughs> disgusting. Um, but okay, so moving on to my first impression. So I watched this movie for the first time a long time ago. Maybe when I even watched The Exorcist and like the Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense. So when I rewatched it last week, I remembered some of the emotions that I felt for the first time when I watched it. And I remembered some scenes and some of it was coming back to me, but for the most part I was just kind trying to like pretend that I was watching it for the first time. But I do remember like just mostly feeling disturbed and so grossed out so i think i have also that phobia of like holes and bumps like something when looks when something looks really infectious Mm -hmm. it makes my skin crawl i feel like vomiting like it makes it makes me cringe so hard and also when he started to develop so when he started to develop in each scene i just remembered being so grossed out and along with that his stupid vomit scene and then like basically showing how he eats Mm-mm. it's just <laughs> disgusting it's so gross i will say that i like how he used that even though it was like um when he's trying to eat what's his face and then he like vomits Stabbed. on his yeah. hand yeah. and then like his ankle just, like burns yeah <laughs> i'm oh, like that's gosh. disgusting but my favorite scene i think is as gross as it is i also appreciated it was the full transformation scene So I was completely grossed out the entire time and I felt my skin crawl, but it's like the worst scene for me, yet it was the coolest to watch. Mm. Like just seeing his literal Mm -hmm. face open and then like a full fly come out. Mm -hmm. And then of course he tries to, you know, he tries to morph with um, Veronica. Yeah. Yeah. With Ronnie. Um, And it didn't work. Instead, he morphed with the machine. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Which is even more disturbing. But that's, that's, that's all I got. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That's, yeah, no, this, this movie, um, yeah, it was, it was my first time watching it. Uh, again, I didn't really know what I was expecting because, again, obviously I've, I've heard of the movie. Mm-hmm. I just never thought to, like, read the description of it right. or watch the trailer or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have a couple things, <laughs> a couple questions. Number one, where the hell are they getting these monkeys from? Yo, that was literally a question that I said out loud. I was like, where the hell are they getting these baboons? Mm-hmm. I was like, are they just walking into the zoo and being like, I need that one? Yeah. Give me that one immediately. Yeah. And then when he apologized to the second baboon, he's like, sorry, I killed your brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, was so ah! sad. I was like, no. I was like, well, and then half of me is like, I understand that he's a scientist and like, I don't doubt that his labs might have like testing baboons or whatever right so my thing is that he didn't know so he said that he's tested it before and he was like yeah you don't want to know what happens when i test a living thing but i'm like why not start small why not start with like a tarantula right like start start with some big insects you know what i mean and then like slowly move your way up why you gotta get a whole baboon (laughs) first of all like the i don't i'm really I don't know where the fuck they got these babies. <laughs> I don't either. And the fact that he basically kept the second one as a pet for a little bit uh-huh. until we stopped seeing him. Yeah. But I was I was also confuzzled a little confuzzled, bit. Confuzzled, yeah. Um, I liked whenever Ronnie Ronnie was like, um, do you ever change? Like, <laughs> She's like, your outfit? Are, are your clothes not dirty? And He's I like, what do you mean? This kid you not. I thought the exact same thing when he walked in the next day to... Um, ronnie's boss's like office. oh yeah mm-hmm. and i was like wait has he not changed mm-hmm. and then he, she literally says something about it i'm like hey. and then she opens his closet i yeah. busted out laughing i think it was like the most i think that was the most like innocence that i saw yeah. out of him mm-hmm. until it got broken but i just thought it was like the funniest thing because mm-hmm. he literally has like five sets of the same outfit yeah. which i'm like you know what good for you you know hey. what looks good on you mm-hmm. you know what you like mm-hmm. you don't have to second guess exactly. it exactly like, good for you you don't and and quite literally he says like you know i never have to worry about what i'm gonna wear yeah i mean because it's true it's true, it's true. so but good jeff, for him jeff is so handsome he is so dreamy even now yeah even, even now, now. age like fine wine my mom walked in on us uh, watching the movie. She was like, oh, my God, he's so young in this movie. And I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, OK, I, we, I was going to mention it whenever like we talk about the cast. But I'm also so I'm obsessed with Jeff. I'm also obsessed with Gina Davis. Yeah, I literally love her so much. And then having them both together in an 80s movie mm-hmm. in their prime time. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? by panic they had great chem- i i think they, did. they had pretty good chemistry together i they did yeah. they did could have mm-hmm. believed could have fooled me mm-hmm. you know what i did not appreciate 
fucking gross ass what's his name uh stathis <laughs> veronica i was so confused boss yes i was so confused when she like found him in the shower and then I was like, what's going on here? And then I had to confirm. I was like, is that her boss? Mm-hmm. And then Mateo was like, yeah. And I was like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> That's even worse. I know. But he, first of all, he was so icky and so gross. And honestly, I think he should have died um, fully. <laughs> like 100%. You know, like, I think he should have just ended him. Yeah. He should have just vomited on um, his head. But the fact that this motherfucker was like, he he says this to Veronica. He's like, do I have permission to claim your body when all of this is over? Absolutely not. What the fuck? <laughs> that is the entitlement that a lot of men have. So whenever we say that we hate men, that is the exact type of men yes. that we are talking about. <laughs> or man. What the fuck? Yeah, oh seriously. When he said that, I was like, no, he did not Men say genuinely that. have the audacity. Uh-uh. <laughs> Disgusting. Ugh. Oh um, but I don't know. Yeah. And then I know you said this a little bit. Uh, I think this was, you said it was one of your favorite scenes, but... Listen, if I walked in on my man performing a whole ass gymnastics routine. Oh, 100%. I too would be confused as fuck. She was confused, but it also looked like she was turned on. Yeah. She's like, damn, you can lift. Yeah. What happened? No, her, her, I feel like her initial reaction was like confuzzled. Like what the hell? I was like, same. Yeah. But, uh, I feel like overall this movie was like very, it's the true definition of the word uncanny. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Honestly, I I had to read this story twice in two different classes uh, already. But if uh, if you like this type of kind of genre, mm-hmm. or, um, I don't know if you like bug shit. Um, <laughs> if you like then bug I shit, I would recommend you read um, Octavia Butler's The Blood Child. I don't think I've read that one. You should read it. Okay. I actually really, I didn't hate it. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and kid you not, throughout the whole movie, I was like, this is literally very similar. <laughs> this to is the fly. The blood, yeah. Okay. To the blood child. So I love that. I, I would recommend doing that. I love. And, and reading it if oh. you haven't already. But I have not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a getting chance. a little bit more into the cast, because uh, again, this movie was stacked with uh, an absolute great cast and Mm -hmm. although it was a very short cast uh, i'm still gonna name them of course we have jeff goldblum as seth brendel gina davis as veronica john getz as stathis and joy bushel 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 um as tawny the girl from the bar um like i said i think i mean the two main people are on the screen the entire time which are uh jeff and gina and i love them yeah so much yeah there's something I've, about young both of them i mean they both look good now yeah but them young Mm-hmm. i was gonna say i feel like the 80s really is like by panic i feel like 70s a 80s a little bit of like the early 90s was i think the thing that really got what really gets it for everyone is that a lot of it looked natural mm-hmm. the natural look was popping yeah and so the fact that they could do it in a movie, outside of a movie, in a restaurant, behind the scenes, like it all is just so like <sighs> dreamy. I feel like as well back in the day, <laughs> like in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever, mm-hmm. the chemistry between actors and actresses was, it felt more authentic and more genuine. Because yeah. I feel like in modern day romances, and of, of course the fly is not a romance, but <laughs> it, it was giving uh, romance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there there is romance incorporated, but yeah, there is. Um, I feel I like, like in modern day rom- romance movies, you don't you don't feel that chemistry or that connection. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I I appreciate Jeff and Gina for having that amazing chemistry. That is true on screen. I feel like I feel like a lot of it. It well, I don't know. They're both really good because I, the fact. So I was gonna compare both of their like. Um, both of their characters off of like jeff in jurassic park he does really well at being very flirty Mm -hmm. and being very like hey man yeah i can be that man for you and i'm Mm -hmm. like oh okay Okay. but then gina also whenever she's in beetlejuice like i genuinely believe that she was married to him like i i I felt like they were a a, an old married couple or newly married couple who were just trying to enjoy their lives and then obviously gets disrupted but like, I don't know. I guess you're right. There's something about just the olden 
not old it. Well, I guess now we're in 2023. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Kevin Hart. Damn. Damn. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, just like kind of like the that era is just something about it's like freshness. It's dreamy. It's romance. It's subtle. It's I don't know. It's like the simplicity of what all things could have been yeah but now we're all complicated and mm-hmm. and traumatized the whole uh, <laughs> and toxic crazy anyway <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah but um we got some facts we sure do have some facts we love so, the facts um again this is coming straight from miss imbd i am her. i mean <laughs> imdb imbd Shit. it's always confusing. Shit. one of them is the the line that says or the line I'm saying I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it, but now that dream is over and the insect is awake is a reference to author Zhuangzi's Zwang, Zwang famous butterfly dream story. It's also a reference to Franz Kafka's famous short story, The Metamorphosis. I actually really like that line. Me it did too. sound a little poetic, so I, was I going can to say. see that maybe it could be a reference to a book yeah um i liked it too because i was i was a little confused at first because i was like what do you mean and mm-hmm. then i was like oh i guess i guess we're just kind of getting a little uh wh- what's the word like metaphoric with yeah. with this one and i was like okay yeah. i like it man's poetic metamorphosis <laughs> hillary duff lover moving on anyway um second fact is the scene where seth and ronnie are having coffee at the restaurant and seth is talking endlessly was only half scripted when production began the remainder was written the night before the scene was going to be filmed because jeff goldblum felt that he could add more to the character i was about to say this man this fly turned him into adhd he sure did that man's talk talking and the fact that i actually understood him oh 100 percent because i too have the same yeah but i just thought it was so funny to see it's like the i don't know i think it's like the little quirks that you kind of start noticing after he gets morphed Mm -hmm. and that well that one that one was a doozy to go through (laughs) yeah um and then finally it says in a 1987 interview on sinister image vincent prince revealed that when this remake was released Jeff Goldblum wrote him a letter saying, I hope you like it as much as I liked yours. Price, I said Prince. (laughs) Price was touched by the letter. He composed a reply and went to see the film, which he described as wonderful right up the certain point. It went a little too far. (laughs) I would literally cry. Honestly, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I love. Yeah. And then I think that's also what what my thing is. I will say I'm a pretty fake fan because I've never seen part two. So I want to know what that's about because RIP to Jeff... Uh, not well yeah jeff but like seth brundle because mm-hmm. he he dies and i just thought that that scene was so sad i was like who who said that we can add drama to horror yeah i was like they're supposed to be i'm not supposed to be crying at the end of a horror movie and, okay well to be fair the quiet place fucked that up for me mm. but that's that's neither here nor there <laughs> girl i am not ready for the quiet place three. <laughs> oh, me neither <laughs> but i love it Anyway. Um, yeah, so whenever he's, like, coming out of the thing and he's like, never mind, I feel I'm literally dying and I don't want to do it anymore. I feel like that was a sign that he was ready. Yeah. And when he just turned the gun onto his Dude. head and she was like, no, I can't do it. I was like, okay. but, true, but, like, but shoot his ass. Girl, just shoot it. I was like, why are you <laughs> hesitating? Because she knows that um, Seth was eventually, like, she knew he was in there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but, like, he's not in there anymore. I know. He's not in there. It's just a fly. I know. You better smash that bug. Um, (laughs) Smash the bug. Yeah. (laughs) Get the fly swatter and smoosh him. See, that's kind of what... I I just thought it was so sad. This movie kind of reminded me of the feeling that I felt during Evil Dead Rise Mm -hmm. in The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. It's like the person who you once knew is no longer in their body. Yeah, they're literally morphing into something else. I think that is the scariest thing and i know i touched a little bit more on it um during the exorcist episode but Mm -hmm. i think that's just like one of the scariest it is scary it is scary because it's essentially honestly it's like them dying because one at one one second they were there and the next one they're not yeah you wake up to a whole different person person and and it's it's truly really sad especially if they're not able to survive through something like that yeah um 
but yeah i can definitely yeah. see how this movie had heart i think that's what pulled me in i honestly love this movie i think it's um i think i'm just i'm being reminded of how some of these classics i can see why they're considered classics mm-hmm. um and how fun they are and how how great of an introduction to horror these can be i definitely think on a scary scale if you're trying to get into horror and you want to watch some oldie ones, maybe watch The Fly and then maybe give The Exorcist a try. Yeah. <laughs> and see yeah. if maybe I, you can kind of handle that. There are also two different, like, genres. Uh, the Exorcist is obviously more, like, paranormal Haunting. possession. Um, the Fly is more, like... Disgusting. Sci- it's... Sci-fi. Oh, it's a sci-fi for sure. Sci-fi for it's sure. It's a sci-fi horror and exorcist is like possession horror yeah um both on different spectrums um but so far just because those are the only two we've covered for the season so far yeah <laughs> we definitely have a lot more to come but anyway anyway um let's move a little bit along so since we're kind of nearing the end we're going to do a little would, would you, you rather? <laughs> yeah. hold on now we got to restore it <laughs> we have to do a little would you rather yeah okay um so for this movie would you rather be morphed with a fly or morphed with a baboon baboon i feel like the strength would be more justified if i was morphed it like with a baboon right you know what i mean and i feel like being morphed with a baboon would just make me more hairy because monkeys are already a sort of right they're they're kind of in our line of evolution yeah so there wouldn't be we were once monkeys we were once monkeys but my thing is also like i don't want i don't want to be morphed into anything you know what i mean yeah i just i don't understand i i can't get over i don't understand why he's so strong i also don't know why he didn't shrink he yes. was a big ass fly 100 that's why i don't want to be morphed into a fly because if i'm gonna be morphed into a fly and end up looking like him like i want to be a shoot me i want to be a fly on the wall you know what i mean yeah my Cyrus. My Cyrus. yeah and i can't be a fly on the wall when i'm the size of the goddamn room yes ma'am and it would make more sense if i was the size if i was that size <laughs> but a baboon Oh, one hundred percent. I would be why King I'm Kong. I'm saying I'd rather be a baboon, a babbling think... bundle of what? Harry <laughs> a Potter, a brundle fly. You'd be a a rainaboon. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> you'd be a rainaboon. You'd be a moonaboon. 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 Um. No, yeah. I was. Kid you not. Every time they kept saying baboon, I kept thinking. Uh, I kept thinking of uh, fuck Harry Potter. Oh yes, bubbling, babbling, bumbling band of baboons. <laughs> yes, you know. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I'd rather be morphed into a baboon. Um, if you want to think of any other type of animal, definitely let us know. I think there's going to be a lot cooler. I mean, of options to be morphed with. If I would I had love. To choose, I would morph into a cat. Oh, what were we gonna say? Killer whale, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I want to live in the ocean and I want, I want, I want fishes to fear me. Okay. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I would be a beautiful butterfly. I'm just kidding. Uh, You would get squished. No, imagine you were a human sized butterfly. That's actually really cool. Disgusting. I want to be. You'd have to go through the cocoon phase. I want to be morphed into a biblical, biblically accurate angel jesus no <laughs> but, but i want to be i want to be a star <laughs> i want to be a star um obviously there's a lot of other animals that would probably be cool to be morphed with maybe like a tiger yeah i was thinking lion lioness lioness yeah dolphin although do- they're kind of they're kind of creepy dolphins are a little their characteristics then the, everything that i've read about them <clears throat> They're kind of like the jocks of the sea. Yeah. They're kind of weird. <laughs> they are weird. Very, very sexual. Um, mm-hmm, if, mm-hmm. if you know, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I think, uh, but between at least a fly and a baboon, I think I'd choose a baboon. 100%. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So that's, that's also another thing. Like, mythology teaches me centaurs. Mm-hmm. Half men, half horse. Mm-hmm. Why, why wasn't this that? Like, why didn't he just get wings? 
because we're and not like a, a fat tale. ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He, ne- he never did. He never got wings, did he? I mean, no. he had the ability to like not necessarily no, like even fly. when he morphed, even when he morphed into a full ass fly, I didn't see no wings. I didn't see no wings either. Mm. No buffalo wall wings in here. <laughs> not the B dubs. Uh huh. So interesting. Anyway. Okay, well, we choose baboon. Yeah. Okay. The 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 the, <laughs> ba- the bumbling babbling bumbling band of baboons there we go okay yes. well now let's go ahead let's go ahead and rate this movie so before ending the episode so this is a horror movie and we will be um using our two scales of satisfactory and scary and just because a horror movie is good does not always mean it's scary and vice versa so jessica what would you rate this movie um so scary you scary it scale? wasn't it wasn't scary okay it, to me personally right um I think it was more unsettling. Yeah, 100%. Um, and uncanny. And so scary, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to give it like a 2 out of 10. There Love. were moments where I was like, that's so gross. And like obviously there was, a, there was that scene where I, I did look away because I was just like, I was getting more like yeah. uncomfortable yeah, 100%. than scared, you know? Same. Um, so scary scale, a 2 out of 10. Unsettling scale, mm-hmm. 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. Because... Yeah. It was very unsettling. Yeah. Satisfactory, seven and a half, seven and a half out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. What about you? I mean, yeah, my scary scale is pretty low, too. I think I gave it like a, I gave it a two, but I'm thinking a three for oh. the unsettling factor. Mm-hmm. There were some parts where I was just so very like, ee- Mm-hmm. Um, but if we if we did have an unsettling skill, I would definitely give it more of a yeah more of a seven to eight because um, it was up there and I I appreciated it, but I was very grossed out. Um, and my satisfactory skill, I'm giving it a nine out of ten. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is one of the the cult classics that I think you definitely at least should watch if you're a huge horror fan and you never yeah. got around to watching this. Um, it's a good one to keep on your shelf. I would definitely start buying some merch for this one. I don't have any um and yeah yeah it's a good one i like it for sure for sure understood all right well there goes our ratings well that concludes this episode of the fly looks like we are pretty much at the end of the episode and as always this was a blast to record so if today's episode intrigued you and you haven't watched this movie here is where you can watch the fly you can watch it on hbo max hulu amazon prime with subscriptions or you can also purchase or rent it for $3.99 on YouTube, Redbox, Vudu, and also Google Play Movies um, and TV. So thank you again for everyone tuning in and listening. We truly appreciate all of you. And if you want to keep up with us, we will have all of our social social media in the description. Yes. And uh, as always, I know we say this in every episode, but we sincerely do appreciate all of y'all for listening and for supporting us. Yes, thank you. Um, So with that being said, if you like today's episode, then please tune in to next week's episode where we talk about a personal top favorite of mine, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm -hmm. I'm fangirling. I'm so excited because I get to see, I get to meet, uh, I think, two, two of the Killer Clowns. Um, I'm hoping to meet the Chiodo brothers at yes. this convention, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just so excited. I love this movie. I showed this movie to the four. I showed this movie to Jessica and to our other two friends, Melody and Gina, for the first time. Right? Yes. Because you hadn't seen it before. No, it was. And we were yeah. having a ball. It was amazing. This was this was a movie. This was this a was movie. a movie, and not for the fact of a horror effect. Uh-uh. It's just the fact that. It's just so- it is and, so good. When we, were, when we were talking about by panic earlier, it's the first movie I thought of, and that's why I said the eighties. <laughs> Immediately, yes. Let me tell you, we came up with so many theories. We in came this up room. with theories and um, Chips. relationships. Uh-huh. We came up. We came up with so much for this movie. And, we are and so the excited. clowns were just an added. They were <laughs> just an added. Each this clown so funny represented us oh 100 percent. yes yeah each one of us uh we got represented by a clown in associated this ourselves with a clown yes and yeah. i'm so glad that we can you know rep- representation is Repres- important yes 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. and i'm so excited but i'm honestly genuinely excited to talk about this Me movie too. it's honestly a favorite um another 80s classic and this is this is a horror comedy so there's definitely no whatever we'll get into it but it's not too scary so if you haven't watched it i desperately ask that you watch this movie if you have the means to but it's so cute before you watch it and you haven't watched it before i would recommend going on this little website called does the dog die.com and uh just go from there 
I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, we, we don't see anything. Yeah. We just Maybe he just turned into a clown. You never know. You never know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, we'll leave all the juicy details yeah. for the next episode. Um, but before we end it, Jessica, do you think this week's movie was a movie? Personally, I think it was definitely a movie. <laughs> um i'm still thinking about whether or not it was the movie you know what i mean i think we're gonna have a long discussion as to what the movie would be yeah but i agree yeah. i think this was a movie it was a movie it was definitely it was movie. a movie for mm-hmm. sure for sure mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well there you have it thanks guys again we will talk to y'all next week and as always we've been your host monica and jessica stay safe and, and stay, stay spooky. spooky oof that was scary I can't wait to come back next week.